So let's start from the beginning. When we're dancing, there's the song and our feet, and they need to relate. And the way that we relate our dancing to the music is by using a count. We've got musicians playing any number of instruments in our feet that need to move in a specific cadence in order to relate to those instruments. And the best way to do it is by using numbers. So there's some people who say, I don't want to dance to numbers, I just want to feel the music, but I would ask you to open yourself to the possibility, especially the way that I'm going to break it down, that the numbers are actually going to do more to bring your dancing closer to the music than farther from it. You should also keep in mind that the musicians who are playing the song that you're dancing to are also using numbers. Musicians count in four, and that denotes one phrase of music. That phrase gets repeated throughout the entire song. As dancers, we go up to eight, one phrase of four, and another phrase of four that we just continue counting five, six, seven, eight. And we repeat that throughout the entire song. In between each number, there's another beat that we can note with ands. So instead of counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we can count one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and one and it repeats. Before we get too far, if anyone's feeling intimidated by getting into the count or what's going on with the music, I will say you don't need to understand everything today. If you keep dancing and you revisit this material every so often, I promise you, you're going to get a lot more comfortable with it. With that, I'd like to show an app that's going to be very useful for anyone who's trying to practice, whether you're trying to learn Casino or New York, LA on one on two, whatever. It's called Salsa Rhythm. I think it costs a couple bucks, but it's going to be your best friend if you're trying to practice. It gives you all the instruments that you need to play a basic sol montuno, which is the background rhythm of any song that you would call salsa. It even has a guy who does the count so that you know where the numbers are. But he's kind of rough, so you can shut him off. And you can adjust and customize everything. We'll get into that in a second. But right now we've got the clave, drum, and the bass. And that's what we're going to go over. If we play just the clave, we're going to see that it's marking the 2, the 3, the 5, the and between 6 and 7, and the 8. If we shut off the clave and we play the drum, there's going to be a slap and an open tone. So the slap, slap, slap is right there and that's going to be on two and on the six. Boom, boom, that's the open tone. Boom, boom. And the open tones are going to be on four and eight. Also on four and eight, if we play the bass, the bass can have some variety, but the bass is usually also gonna hit on the four and the eight. Four, eight, four, eight. If we turn everything on, it's gonna play us a sol montuno rhythm. And that's going to be more or less what's going on in any of the songs that we're going to be dancing to. There's one more thing we can do, which is change the order of the clave. So the clave has two strikes and three strikes. And right now we've got the first two strikes happening on the first phrase of the music and the three strikes happening on the second phrase of the music. And what we can do is flip the order. So instead of having the clave go one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. We can change the order to have it go the three side of the clave first. In that case, it would happen on the one, the and between two and three, four, and then six and seven. And that would be three, two clave. And you can adjust that in the app as well. So the question is, how do our feet relate to this music? And we've got a cadence that we need to dance in, and then we've got the order of our feet. So if we take a look at the cadence for the dance, no matter what count we're dancing on today, it's just going to be focused on dancing a tiempo or our first step being on one. No matter what, the cadence of the dance is going to be quick, quick, slow. So if we start with a quick step on one, it's going to eat up a certain amount of time. So it's going to eat one beat, and then we're going to step quick again, and that eats up another beat, 
And then when we step slow, it's gonna last two beats. And that takes us through an entire phrase. Quick, quick, slow. So if we start dancing on the one, it's gonna be one, two, three. And that's why when we count, you don't hear the four because the slow step eats up that four. The same thing when we step again on five, we got a quick step on five and six, and then a slow step on seven that goes all the way to the end of the phrase. So with this rhythm, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven. So whatever foot that we step with first, it's gonna alternate steps no matter what. So if we start with our left foot, like I'm gonna do in the warm-up steps, the next step would be with the right foot, and then again with the left foot. Then throughout that phrase, we've gotta hold our step on that left foot, on the slow beat, and then since we last step with the left foot, we step with the right foot on five, the left foot on six, and the right foot again on seven. So we'll go left, right, left, right, left, right, with the music. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. If we started on our right foot, which we're not doing in this particular video, but you can if you want. If you start with the right foot, the next step would be with the left. And then again with the right, you'd hold that slow beat, step with the left foot, the right foot, and then the left foot. So the most important thing is that they're alternating. So that's just a brief overview of what's happening with the music and with our feet. In the future, I'd like to do a more involved video that gets a little bit more into the music and what's happening. And as far as the feet, maybe dancing on different counts. Today we're dancing on the one or a tempo. We can get into dancing on the two or contra tempo on three, four, whatever count we want. But this quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow in alternating the feet applies no matter what count you're dancing on. So with that, let's take a look at some of the warm-up steps. I divide them into three sections. So for the first one, there's two areas that we go back and forth in between, and we're just kind of moving side to side. First, we start off moving laterally, and then by the end of the series of five steps, we're walking back and forth in between them. The second set of steps is based off of the idea of standing in the middle of the clock, having all of our steps in place except one step of each section is gonna be either on the 12, the three, the six, or the nine, but all the other steps are in the middle. The third set of steps takes that same idea with the clock, but we're not so much in the middle. We're more moving around with the steps, which ends up being more useful for casino. But let's take a look. The first step that we're gonna do is the two step. And it's the only step where we're not alternating the feet because it involves a tap and there's no weight transfer on the tap. So we tap and then step out, tap, out, one, three, five, seven. It just outlines the rhythm that we're gonna be dancing on for the rest of the dance. When we start doing the next step called Paso Song, we step together, together, out, together, together, out. And that introduces the cadence that we're dancing. Quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow. One, two, three, five, six, seven. From there, we're just gonna add a back rock for the first step. So we go back and out, back and out. One, two, three, five, six, seven. From there, we can make another addition, which is gonna be adding a cross in the middle. Back, cross, out. One, two, three, five, six, seven, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, and that gets us moving laterally a little bit. Next, we add a pivot on the slow beat. So when we pivot, we have to hold the pause and keep the weight on whatever foot we last stepped on. So left, right, left, pivot, right, left, right, pivot, one, two, three, pivot, five, six, seven, pivot. This set of steps is gonna be the ones where we're on the clock. All the steps are in the middle, 
except we're gonna step forward to 12 o'clock with the left foot and then back to six o'clock with the right foot. One, two, three, five, six, seven. We can take it out to the side and we'll be stepping on the nine o'clock with the left foot and on three with the right foot. Quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow. One, two, three, five, six, seven. From there, we can start manipulating those steps. It's gonna take us into the third set of steps. So we're adding a cross in the middle now. So I have to step back a little bit to accommodate the foot for the cross. From there, I can start to add a pivot out to the side and then cross. And that'll be one, two, three, five, six, seven, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow. If I go back to the forward and back, I can start manipulating those a little bit too. So instead of stepping totally forward and totally back and everything in the middle, I'm going to use the other steps to travel. So I'll go a little bit forward, then walk back and back again, a little bit back, walk forward, 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 back, 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 forward, forward, and that just creates some more movement. Now I can cross in front on the one with the left foot, back on five with the right foot, and that'll get me moving around a little bit. One, two, three, five, six, seven. But let's try it with some music. Five, six, five, six. 